Greetings. So today I'm going to just uh, discuss a film uh, that I've uh, already talked about uh, and it's been turned five uh, years old this year and uh, fifth anniversary I guess uh, put it more like <laughs> accurately and I figured I just sort of talk about it. I mean I don't know how in great lengths I will t discuss it because you know I mean I again I already talked about it um and I didn't have any spoilers though uh if you know a decent amount about uh Greek mythology you'll probably you know uh understand what the uh characters uh are uh, meant to be, but um, I have uh, three versions of this film, which I have uh, talked about and shown off before. And uh, yeah, and that is The Lighthouse, which is my favorite horror film in the last decade of the 2010s. Great psychological horror film, great performances by... Uh, uh, Robert Pattinson, Willem Dafoe, made by Robert Eggers, who made uh, The Witch and uh, Northman, and whose next film uh, uh, yeah, will be uh, Nosferatu. And yeah, again, as it says here on the back, uh, it's a tale of two lighthouse keepers on a remote and mysterious New England island in the 1890s. As an approaching storm uh, threatens to sweep them from the rock and strange appar apparitions uh, emerge from the fog. Each man begins to suspect that the other has become dangerously unmoored. So, yeah. For the most part, it's pretty much these two. Though there is a there are like you know mermaids there and there you go um so this is the normal uh, blu-ray release and uh, a24 has their own line of uh blu-rays and 4ks and uh i got this because i was unsure if any other uh version would come to like say like Criterion or what have you so I got the 4k blu-ray of this and I'm glad I did because it's very good it's excellent and um this one has some various uh some like storyboards information about the bib front shirt pattern uh production designs drawings behind the scenes pictures and it has featurettes here which uh, has all the stuff that the other blu-ray had which on here is uh, the lighthouse a dark and stormy tale which is like a you know basically a multi-part featurette or documentary about the making of this film audio commentary with co-writer and director robert eggers and deleted scenes um, so, uh, this came out last year, and this has, uh, instruments and inspirations in the studio with the composer, Mark Corvin, outfitting the lighthouse with costume designer Linda Miori, and, of course, the making of the lighthouse, and the other things I mentioned there, and, uh, this is a really uh, excellent transfer for Blu-ray and uh, or the 4K version and uh, and I had seen some stuff with uh, other films of theirs, but you know the Lighthouse I really love from May twenty four. It's just a very good film, you know. You know, you know Thomas Wagen 
Ephraim Winslow. His uh, Pattinson is uh, called initially, and of course his real name uh, comes forth later. And there is a drawing of Robert Pattinson's character. <laughs> It's really cool how they, uh, there's a Willem Dafoe. It's really cool how they, uh, built an actual lighthouse from the ground up. Because they weren't able to, uh, you know, find one appropriately that you could use to fill, but because they, oh boy, excuse me, but because they built it, you know, no doubt they would have been able to ensure certain sections would be able to be used to move the camera up and down the inside quite easily. And um, they filmed this uh, on an island in Nova Scotia. And of course, you know, obviously they built the lighthouse keeper uh, home. Um, I love the light lighthouse, obviously. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, and then later, like, you know, this came out in 2023. So last year, and then so did this. The Arrow version. And, uh, Special features have, uh, you know, obviously the uh, commentary by Robert Eggers, but as well as uh, a new one by authors Guy Adams and Alexandria Be Benedict. Heart of Darkness, a new documentary, a oh, brand new, in <clears throat> brand new in-depth documentary of the film, the production, themes, influences, with new interviews from. Director Robert Eggers, uh, Director of Photography Jaron uh, Blacksky, Blacksky, uh, uh, me again uh, mispronouncing names, no doubt. Uh, production designer Greg Lanthrop, uh, or production designer, and then costume designer Linda Mary, and uh, yeah, authors Graham. Or Guy Adams and Alexandra Benedict. Uh, the Lighthouse Next Door. Consuming the Consuming House. Tale of Robert Eggers' the Lighthouse. Brand new visual essay on the Lighthouse. It's and its folklore influences by author and critic Kate Ellinger. Uh, the Dark and Storm or the Lighthouse, a, a dark and stormy tale. A, a three-part documentary of the making of the film. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then from there, it's just the same stuff that we've seen, as well as, uh, cool stuff. So there is the, take this off and, uh, Yeah, this is a excellent film. Um, of course, uh, the poster that Arrow releases like this uh, will have just two sided. One of which is the Arrow cover, and then the other is. The normal theatrical poster. Which is what I've decided uh, that this is going to be the cover of the actual uh, disc that I have, or of the, of the actual disc. Yeah. 
I guess in a way it's more mostly a show and tell. I've already showed this before, but you know it can't hurt again because uh, this is a really good movie, and all, the back of all these little cards are all the same. So here's one, very uh, simple and well-known <laughs> picture oh get up in the I up and dropped it but the, the performances by these two are truly amazing um, I know there are people who aren't really fond of this film, um, but I have to say this is just fantastic in terms of acting and writing and like the way they all they speak, the old uh, dialect from the 1890s is truly excellent, and uh, I uh, I appreciate the work that uh, Robert Eggers and his brother did. In, oh, there you go. There's. I guess the end of the film. <laughs> Spoiler. I guess, well, not, doesn't really say much of anything. It's just that that is at the end of the movie. Um, and yeah, uh, oh, various essays. You know, Aromatis, Edgar Allan Poe, and H.P. Lovecraft, The Lighthouse. <laughs> Yeah, this is a Arrow. Uh, I I mean, I obviously I love Criterion release films, um, or the films that they release. They release many excellent films, but I really do love what Arrow has done with you know not just like you know this is a good example of one. This is just fantastic. Um, they do have more coming in the near future, obviously. Um, but yeah. yeah. Um, Prometheus is an inspiration in terms of Greek mythology. And, uh, you know, Poseidon. You know, like, there's another for like the. Like the look of Willem Dafoe and like his beard and like the waves and everything. It's just. I just, uh, I just really want to highlight this film again. It's a, it's a film I love rewatching over and over because. The story is just truly excellent. And the acting and writing and direction and everything is phenomenal, in my opinion. Um, this obviously got nominated for the Academy Award for Best Cinematography, which it deserved the nomination. It did not win, unfortunately. Um, I have often mentioned this as how fond I am of it and how I think it should have been nominated for multiple Academy Awards and won many of them. It's, in my opinion, the best film of 2019. Um, um, I have seen Parasite and that was a good film. Um, I have not gotten the Criterion version of it because it was like, you know, I liked it, but at the same time it's like, do I like it enough to buy it again? I don't know. I might buy it at some point. Um, I mean, the, as of recording, it's still October, so the Barnes & Noble sale will be uh, in effect for the 50% off of the Criterion films for November. At least it should, you know. It has in the past, so hopefully it will now. And there is the disc. 
And there are the oh, cards. Yeah. And, um, you know, Willem Dafoe should have been up for supporting actor. Robert Pattinson for best actor. In my opinion, they should have won, as well as Robert Eggers for best uh, uh, director and best picture, because uh, he helped produce the film. And I think even best uh, screenplay, original screenplay by Robert Eggers and his brother Max. Um, though I do really like the writing of uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's an excellent film, too. And um, well written, but usually Tarantino films are generally well written. Whether or not people like them at the end, you know, uh, the dialogue is often very good. It's just, you know, they, uh, <laughs> some people aren't super fond of, like, say, the violence or perhaps some of the strong language. Sometimes a bit of both, but, you know, uh, Tarantino. Did a very uh, excellent, uh, did an excellent job on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And it isn't a very violent film either, but, you know, at least compared to his others. Um, this film, I think, is a, it's truly excellent. Um, yeah, I, I'm very biased, and I think that uh, whatever Academy Awards you think you could probably say this could be up for, I would likely say, yeah, it could have definitely been uh, uh, the winner. Um, the story, you know, truly, truly just uh, excellent, you know. Uh, you know, there's various ways people interpret this film, and uh, Robert Eggers actually intended this movie to basically be a movie where at the end of it all, you have your own interpretation. Some movies do that, and it's kind of like, it's like a cop-out. Like, it might have gotten really weird at places, and you're not sure what's going on. And then so after the fact, it's like, oh, well, you know, your, your own interpretation is correct. There is no right one, the right interpretation. There's no wrong interpretation. You know, and then sometimes it's obvious that the director you know, didn't necessarily know what a lot of that meant was supposed to mean. And so as a result, they decided whatever your interpretation is, it's right. Because, you know, it got weird and uh, it didn't, it kind of got back on track at some point, but still was weird and odd. So there you go. Uh, plus there were fart jokes. Uh, well, you know, in terms of uh, Willem Dafoe constantly farting <laughs> quite a bit throughout the film, which uh, after the grueling uh, uh, shooting of The Witch, Robert Eggers was like, I need some humor in my next film. Hence why there were, you know, there was <laughs> the uh, farting. It's interesting how... Um, Or, uh, you know, the the two main actors, you know, <clears throat> he says, two wikis, one inexperienced, Robin, Robert Pattinson, right next to him is a film he's known for, which is Tenet, and <clears throat> he is very good in Tenet, and, uh, you know, um, but it's interesting that that's the film, you know, and this did come out after The Batman, which, you know, obviously... He's playing a, an iconic superhero. <clears throat> but, you know, yeah, uh, I guess, you know, since Christopher Nolan also made us superhero films, you know, let's put his movie in there. Tenet is uh, quite interesting. You know, as time has gone on, people have been more kind to that film. Um, not that everybody will love it, but, you know, you know, it's, it's one of those where people, the more they watch it, they, they enjoy it more. Which is nice. And then for this, uh, with Willem Dafoe, the other a grizzled veteran, you know, for a wiki, 
you know, White House keeper. It says, uh, Willem Dafoe. And he's known for, like, you know, to live and die in L.A. Which, you know, you know <clears throat> very good film, though. Would that be the one of the first things you think of with Willem Dafoe? I think many of my generation would probably think, you know, Spider-Man. He was the Green Goblin. Um, or you could probably say uh, Platoon. Or uh, 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 oh, the film where he was... Max Shrek, you know, in the making of Nosferatu, um, Shadow of the Vampire, you know, he was really good in that, he got nominated for Oscars for those two films, you know, um, I don't know, although I guess with Willem Dafoe, you know, he's very much, uh, one of those actors who has done so much, you know, you gotta have to just find one film he's very well known for, and I guess, you know, they decided not to go for the obvious, like, you know, Spider-Man or Platoon. Um, but, yeah. This is a film that when people watch, it's like, wow. Like, that was an experience. And uh, even Robert Eggers, he's like, you know, when I, I want people to leave the theater going, like, the hell did I just watch? And, uh. I definitely thought that, you know, in terms of, like, what all happened and, um, at the end of it all, once everything is done and you're just like, okay, that was quite the experience. And it's like, you know, one interpretation was that this, this film was purgatory, um, uh, pertaining with one character in particular, but... You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just love this film. It's it's one that I can always rewatch at various points. Obviously, Halloween season is a great time to rewatch it. I've always just found myself at some point. During the year, just like, you know, I want to watch something. I don't know. And, you know, obviously, you know, Star Wars and Jaws and stuff like that that I frequently discussed my fondness for, obviously, are ones that will be big go-tos for me. But then others, it's like, you know, I don't want to just go to something like, say, my top 10 or 20 favorite films, like List or whatever. So I'll just try to go... And think about something else. What 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 do I want? You know, something that is different, you know, out of the ordinary. And I'll usually put this on. And that usually uh, satisfies. That it typically does satisfy me. If it doesn't, I will often try to find another film that is often just as odd and <laughs> different. And, and odd in the best way, you know. There are many odd films. Some are just so odd and out there that you're just like well that was that was something you know you know, I'm not sure what but that was something you know sometimes the experience isn't necessarily a great one but it's uh, an experience nonetheless and um I think the lighthouse definitely qualifies as if uh an experience but in my opinion, the one of the best kind of experience. You know, you get sucked into this world, this atmosphere, and this black and white world, and shot in a 1.19 to 1 aspect ratio. Of, can I do that? Like, like, something like this, where it's, yeah, it's like, a little tighter than a normal four four by three small aspect ratio. It's just very, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know, something like this. You know, where you're pretty much in the frame, and to be in the frame with two people, you have to have everyone has to be 
closer together or you have to move the camera back so the two are in the frame and yeah gives a very claustrophobic atmosphere that is very fitting for the film and i always enjoy the atmosphere the story the characters the various influences from greek mythology and other such things it's a, it's a, it's an extra excellent film you know and it does sort of feel like in some cases like a edgar Allan poe story it's you know um yeah a uh, <clears throat> a but hp lovecraft and uh Uh, what was the lady's name? Sarah something. Uh, offhand. The other, the writings in particular with, with, with how they spoke. This lady's uh, uh, writings uh, is what really inspired how they speak in this film. Aye, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, yes, sir. Aye, sir. Aye, sir. <laughs> Interactions like that is, is really good. Uh, Ephraim Winslow. I'm just calling him Lad. Uh, yeah, Proteus. Proteus, yeah. Proteus, that was the, the, the Neptune, yeah, the inspiration for like the curl waves, wavy like thing for his hair and the kind of like the beard is for Willem Dafoe. But yeah, Proteus, you know, you know, yeah. Yeah, that was the other one where uh, Prometheus is definitely Winslow, Rub Robert Pattinson's character's inspiration. Uh, Sarah Thorne, Julie Jul Jubilson. Come on, come on. Yeah, and uh, Robert Pattinson really wanted to, uh, as he told uh, Robert Eggers, want to do something weird. But back at that point, he really only wanted to do something weird, and so he <laughs> had the light. I was like, well, here, here's this, because they were talking about other things to do together, because, you know, uh, uh, Robert Pattinson wanted to work with <coughs> Robert Eggers after seeing The Witch, but whatever projects he was uh, throwing out there to him, he was just kind of like, eh, not really feeling it personally, but, you know, uh, I want to do something weird. He's like, well, this is it. This is the weirdest thing I have. If this isn't weird enough for you, I'm, I'm sorry. I guess we'll have to wait until I can find the right uh, kind of weirdness <laughs> for you to perhaps uh, the two of them to work together. Um... Yeah. Don't they have the, the lady's name in here? I thought they did. Yeah. I'm now just drawing a blank. That's nice. Oh, well, um... Here, here's the lady's name whose works were actually the inspiration. If I can't find a way, hold on. There we go. Yeah. Sarah Oren Jewett, as well as some of the novels of uh, Herman Melville, you know. So those two works were very 
instrumental in terms of like the dialogue as well as uh, uh, yeah inspired by a fragment unfinished fragment of text by uh, Edgar Allan Poe called The Lighthouse where it's like various journal entries or something and uh, people say it's unfinished but it's also there's debate whether maybe this was the finished product and um, Edgar Allan Poe intended that as time went on with the lighthouse you know the, the the fewer and fewer entries was done purposefully but then there are those who's like well he was supposed to write more but then he unfortunately died and never got around to finishing it so it's one of those uh, things where people aren't sure what was supposed to be in terms of uh, some of Edgar Allan Poe's last uh, writings. That's one that is definitely looked at as being unfinished, but who knows, maybe it was completely finished. We just likely won't <laughs> under, we likely won't uh, know because, well, that was written in the 1800s and we there are people debating it today so yeah but uh yeah you can definitely tell uh the inspiration from poe and lovecraft to this film also just a visual film or just on a visual level the film is excellent you know the black and white really uh complements this film um and there are people who don't enjoy black and white films on the basis they're black and white. I've never understood that, but I, again, I grew up watching a good healthy dose of obviously colored films or films in color, you know, uh, Star Wars and such. And, uh, but I also watched like, you know, the Universal Monster movies where some of the first, you know, not only some of the first horror films I saw, but some of the first, uh, black and white films i saw but i also watched some black and white shows like i love lucy the Munsters, the adams family andy griffith and others growing up from both like local channels as well as uh <clears throat> nick at night and tv land um yeah I, I grew up watching a good amount of black and white stuff and i have a great appreciation for black and white black and white is Truly excellent. Um, now, some films would not benefit being in black and white. You know, it might be like, you know, this would be very vibrant. And so, you know, it, sh it should be in color. But then there are those films that should be in black and white. Like, perhaps the atmosphere would be more, you know, suited. Like, the film or show would be better suited in a black and white look. Um, and... Uh, the lighthouse absolutely uh, fits uh, being well done in black and white. And, uh, Anyway, I wanted to just show my fondness for the lighthouse again, and I guess show off <laughs> the various copies I have, because, you know, it's absolutely essential to have uh, three copies of uh, uh, the same film like this. Now, this absolutely has some cool stuff, and um, I don't know if Criterion will ever have the lighthouse, I would assume, for quite some time they're gonna have some uh arrow will have the rights though this did was a uk release so <clears throat> and criterion is primarily a you know a north american company they're here in, a, in the usa but obviously you know canada and uh yeah mexico fit with that but also uh, those in South America can watch the uh, uh, 
region A stuff, if I recall correctly. But yeah, so maybe they could. But I think if they were, if the if the lighthouse was to go to Criterion, they would have to have some really good uh, extras, you know, more uh, another some more interviews with Robert Pattinson and uh, Willem Dafoe would be great. Um, perhaps one with um, the woman who was the mermaid that would be really good I think as well as um, even though perhaps <laughs> uh, even though her part was small I still think the mermaid uh, the lady who played her would be really cool to talk to and or hear what she had to say about the experience regardless of how long she was there uh, honestly and um also would be cool if max eggers was interviewed too because he obviously helped write this film with his brother so i think that would be very uh well done like i think they could definitely do um uh, more stuff um Criterion has done that in the past. You know, they get the old stuff from the previous Blu-ray or DVD releases, puts all that stuff there, and they, of course, have new stuff. So if they had enough new stuff uh, added to, like, for, for their supplements, uh, and they're all very enticing. Uh, you know, I don't know if the Arrow kind of stuff would ever be imported because, you know, they have their thing for the lighthouse, so they might not want them to actually get their stuff <laughs> uh, onto the Criterion version if one ever happened. But I think that Criterion could definitely get uh, some new interviews and new stuff uh, about talking about this film, honestly. Um, I would get it if they did so, but time will tell. And I think with the Euro release, it might be like, you know, we're also looking at other things, too, to release and put in our catalog. You know, the Lighthouse might fit, but have to hold off uh, at so, to, for a later date because, you know, Arrow did it. But who knows? Maybe another uh, American company that has physical media, like, say, Kino, or, you know, Kino Lorber or Shout Factory through their... You know, Scream Factory uh, label could do that, or any number of uh, North American labels, honestly. But regardless, um, I really love The Lighthouse. Five years old, five years, I, I still remember seeing it in the theater and being wowed. And uh, as much as I enjoyed films like... Uh, the Irishman, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I liked Joker. Uh, I liked Parasite. Amongst many other films that came out. Uh, Ford vs. Ferrari. The Lighthouse, to me, is still the best. Um, it's my opinion. You know, you could have a different opinion. And yeah, I have talked quite a bit. And uh, hopefully I didn't ramble on too much. Because... I do know sometimes that happens, but I'm about, you know, almost 40 minutes now. But yeah, I will stop. And I hope all of you, all of you are doing well. All of you, I hope you're all having a great day. Hope you're all having a great week. Or had a great week. Hope your weekend will be great. Or, well, it is still a week. Yeah, hope you'll have a great weekend and your week has been great. And I'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye.